So then, Battlefield 2042 has now been revealed. The trailer just went live. I'm sure you've got a million questions about this new game and what it's all going to be about. So luckily for you, I've got all the information you need. Big shout out to EA for giving me early access to this info, but we've got a huge amount that we need to get through in this video. So sit back, relax. It's time to learn everything about Battlefield 2042. Okay, first up, what is Battlefield 2042? It's the next generation of Battlefield, according to EA and DICE. It's powered by cutting-edge technology, and it's going to push the capabilities of even the next-gen hardware at this point, and it drops players into a near-future all-out war experience with unprecedented scale, game-changing destruction, and matches with up to 128 players on the latest consoles and PC. That doubles the player count from previous Battlefield games. Now, the world in 2042, it's on the brink. There are supply shortages, there are food shortages, and there's a lack of clean drinking water. Climate change has massively impacted certain lands and continents, it's devastated coastlines, and soaring temperatures have displaced millions of people. Dozens of nations have failed, it's created the world's greatest refugee crisis. These people are labelled non-patriated, or non-pads for sure. And they're just average people. They're engineers, they're farmers, they're families together. But essentially, they're all soldiers. The crisis is only escalated as certain superpowers, namely the United States and Russia, they draw the world into a global war by shutting down their borders and recruiting these non-pat specialists to fight for their cause. Now, having just given you a pretty decent chunk of narrative there, let's discuss the first major talking point of Battlefield 2042. This game will not feature a traditional single-player experience. DICE has decided that the story, the narrative of the war, will be told through the multiplayer, through real-time events that will reshape the battlefield and the tactical combat that's happening. This means Battlefield 2042 is a multiplayer-focused title. And in that regard, DICE gave us a look at their framework for multiplayer. It's going to be split into three large gameplay sections. The first one is All Out Warfare, the second is Hazard Zone, and then the third is an unannounced mode being developed by DICE LA. But let's start with All Out Warfare first of all. This is your typical classic Battlefield multiplayer experience, only it's just on a scale that you've never played before. Conquest and Breakthrough, they headline the experience, featuring the largest maps ever created for a Battlefield game in order to accommodate the new 128 player cap on the next gen consoles and on PC. PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, they'll be capped at 64 players to maintain good hardware performance and as such, the map sizes for them will be slightly smaller. Infantry soldiers, tanks, jeeps, tuk-tuks, APCs, little birds, attack choppers and jets, they're all together on maps that have been specifically designed to fit into the narrative of this new world war that's raging on. You've got dynamic weather events and large-scale destruction. The word Levolution was mentioned in the presentation that, that I was part of. And all of that comes into the mix, with some examples being given as a tornado that rips right across the map, destroying almost everything in its path and actually picking up soldiers and throwing them into the air, and large sandstorms that can block out the sun, which plunge maps into a state of semi-darkness. Then there's Hazard Zone. Now, this does actually sound really interesting, but we don't have a lot of information. I'll read you what DICE has provided me. Hazard Zone is an all-new, high-stakes, squad-based game type for the Battlefield franchise that is a modern take on the multiplayer experience. It's distinctly DICE, but very different from the type of gameplay that you'll experience in all-out warfare modes like Conquest and Breakthrough. And it's not a Battle Royale. DICE made that final point several times in their presentation. Hazard Zone is not a Battle Royale mode. And then they've said nothing more. I'm going to assume that later down the line, closer to launch, we will learn more about Hazard Zone. And then lastly, the third developed mode is being made by DICE LA. And this is the love letter to Battlefield fans that's been mentioned a few times by EA before the reveal of 2042. And details of this mode will be revealed at EA Play Live on July 22nd. So for now, this one is a complete unknown. I do have some extra information here on the game modes. We spoke about Conquest and Breakthrough in the All Out Warfare section. 
Those are the two game modes that have been confirmed so far, and DICE wasn't telling about what other kind of game modes might be included, but there are a couple of changes with these game modes. Conquest is changing. No longer will you be fighting for your nation's flag to be raised over a certain strategic point on the map. Instead, you'll be fighting for different objectives within different sectors. So you need to control all of the objectives highlighted within a sector, and then you control that sector of the map for your team. So essentially, instead of it being a flag, one part of the map is broken away as a sector, and then you control it. And then for Breakthrough, if you've played in Battlefield 5, you'll know that each sector must be captured by the attacking team. You have to control each objective within the sector to unlock the next one and then move through. And of course, both of these modes will support 128 players on the next-gen consoles and PC, and that's going to be absolutely incredible. So that information there gives you the kind of scope for multiplayer within Battlefield 2042, and of course there is no single player, just going to reiterate that. But of course you want to know about the maps in multiplayer, don't you? In the presentation we were given details on seven launch maps coming to Battlefield 2042. I'll go through each of them now, I've got a short description, and I've got an image for each of them as well. First one is called Kaleidoscope. This is set in South Korea, and it features a huge built-up skyscraper area where zip lines can be used to move from roof to roof. Down on the ground, canals provide attack routes for specialists and amphibious vehicles, giving you a huge urban battleground. The location centers around an information hub that is spewing misinformation into a global network. Next up is Manifest. Set in Singapore, it's a fight for American supply lines set in a huge container yard. Global trade is more delicate than ever, with failed nation states and millions of non-pats around the world. Fighting is said to be really, really intense here, with cranes that will pick up and move containers around the port as you fight, and massive docked ships that will include their own play areas. This sounds like an upscaled and futuristic Noshar Canals from Battlefield 3. Then the third map is called Orbital. This one is set in French Guiana. The map focuses around a rocket launch site where a controversial launch becomes the center of attention. Sometimes the launch goes well, and other times the launch doesn't go well at all. So expect Levolution and Destruction to really take hold on this map. Then there's Discarded, set in India. Changing shorelines due to climate change have sent this shipbreaker's yard into a spiral. There are rogue nuclear assets that are held within the breaker yard, and it's a fight to reclaim those assets. Renewal is the fifth map, set in Egypt. I like the look of this one the best. I think it looks incredible. In the center of the desert, a huge agricultural farming center is being maintained to keep supply of crops moving. Right down the middle of the map is a huge fence, and it separates this utopia from the harsh sand dunes of the desert beyond. Hourglass is your sixth map. This one is set in Qatar. Shifting sands and a lost shipping convoy tear this city apart, where sand has completely overtaken the stadium and nearly buried it. A neon city to the east lights up the map as massive sandstorms roll through, completely devastating the area. Expect lots of vehicle combat on this map. And then last, but certainly by no means least, we have Breakaway. This is set in Antarctica. A struggle here has sparked over oil and gas fields, within an area already dotted with plenty of fuel cells. This is the largest map included in Battlefield 2042, measuring 5.9 kilometers squared. That's absolutely massive. An outlook area has a helipad hanging over a cliff edge, so maybe an homage to Damavan Peak from Battlefield 3. I did see a clip where you can jump down from the pad towards the fuel silos below, and that looked pretty awesome with a bunch of players using wingsuits. Oh yeah, wingsuits are in Battlefield 2042 as well. Now all of these maps, they look really interesting, and the image of each that you're looking at only shows you a very, very small fraction of the overall player base. Remember, each of these maps supports up to 128 player combat in Conquest and Breakthrough, so expect the fighting to be just all over the place. Perhaps you won't even see certain parts of the map for a few games at a time when you play that map. And more locations will be added as part of Battlefield 2042's live service. There will be four seasons slated to follow through the launch of 2021 into 2022, so there will be more maps in the future. Right then, next, Specialists. 
Gone are the traditional battlefield classes in 2042, and in come the specialists. These are non-pat soldiers that have become your playable characters in the game. They are inspired by the traditional battlefield classes, so Assault, Medic, Support, Recon, Engineer, and, and all the others that were included in various games, and they'll be equipped with their own unique specialist trait and a specialty item. And then that can be combined into a fully customizable loadout. Specialists can use any category of weapon in Battlefield 2042. So if you want to run as a recon specialist with a silenced assault rifle and run around at close range rather than a sniper rifle, you can do that. Or a support specialist with a marksman rifle and operate at longer ranges. You can do that if you want to as well. There will be 10 different specialists to choose from at the launch, and four of them have been revealed so far. Casper is the first one, born in South Africa, a recon specialist. His unique specialty is the OVP recon drone, and his trait is the movement sensor. This can pick up movement around you depending on how fast or slow an enemy might be moving. So if they sprint, you'll detect them. But if they're crouch walking and moving very slow, well, you better watch out. Then there's Webster McKay, born in Canada, an assault specialist. His specialty gadget is the grappling hook, and his trait is nimble, although we don't have any more information. Maria Falk, born in Germany, is a support specialist. They can use their specialty Surrette pistol gadget to heal and revive people from a distance, and their trait is combat surgeon. And then lastly, we have Boris. Big Boris. A big Russian Boris. And he's an engineer specialist. He's got access to a sentry gun that can be positioned around the map at strategic points, and he can take down enemies. Alongside these 10 launch specialists, four more will be added as part of the live service for the game, which I'll talk about in a moment. Now let's touch on weapons and vehicles. You'll have seen plenty of these in the reveal trailer, and whilst I don't have anything like a complete list of all of this yet, DICE did share details of their brand new PLUS system, which is a way for players to customise their weapons in real time and adjust and react to a changing environment that we're in. Now, the PLUS system is very similar to the Crisis weapon modding system, so if you've ever played any of the Crisis games, you'll roughly know what's going on, but essentially, a hologram menu will appear over your gun and it'll allow you to change your weapon's barrel, scope, ammo type, and underbarrel attachment live in-game. So you don't have to wait until you've been killed to hit the loadout menu anymore. You've got to stick with the gun you've got, but you can change all the attachments. So maybe you go from long range to short range if you change the kind of scenario. Sounds really, really cool, and I can't wait to give it a go. Now, DICE did supply three weapon names in the presentation. The M5A3, which is like a modern M4 assault rifle, I think. The K30 Vector SMG and the 4V9 Marksman rifle. Although, if you've watched the reveal trailer, and I'm sure somebody's already compiling a massive list, and I'll probably do a video tomorrow on all of those weapons. Now, as for the vehicles, those are going to be more accessible than ever in Battlefield 2042. Players are going to be able to use their call-in tablet to request land vehicles to be delivered to almost any playable location on the map. And you can even call in vehicles over the heads of your enemy and try and crush them if you want to. Although if you miss, you're probably giving them a free vehicle, so maybe aim carefully. But vehicles have been completely reworked to emphasize teamwork. Each seat in a vehicle is going to have a specific role. So there might be anti-air seats, there might be a spotter seat, and there'll be gunner seats, and of course the driving seat. So whichever seat you take, there will be a role for you to play as the vehicle moves around the battlefield. And from the info that I got from DICE, the very least this game will include in terms of vehicles is the Apache helicopter, the SU-57 Elon jet, and the E6JGR recon tank. Although we've also seen... I think quad bikes are in there. There's definitely tuk-tuks in there. There definitely looks like there's an Abrams tank in there. So, you know, the list will grow. Okay, let's now talk about the live service and the support Battlefield 2042 is going to be getting moving into the future. DICE is stating that the game will have a battle pass system for each season of the game. That will include free and premium tiers, and I'm assuming that's going to be filled with, like, cosmetic items and stuff like that. The community will be kept together, Although it's not specific as to what that means, but I think we can probably establish that's no splitting of gameplay content, so maps and weapons available for everybody. That sounds like good news. And each season will be used to push forward the narrative of the 2042 world, bringing in new content at the same time. This goes back to the game not having a single player experience. The multiplayer, that's going to be used to tell the story. 
and that's a route that a lot of games are taking these days. In the first year, there will be four different seasons, four different battle passes, four new specialists and new locations, along with more new content as well. EA did give me access to a few slides of content that will be included in different bundles for 2042, as well as extra information here. The slides show what different versions of the game will get different cosmetic items, and from that we can gather that there will be weapon skins, there will be vehicle skins, there looks to be specialist skins as well, weapon charms, melee weapons, player card backgrounds and tags, and even a robotic dog. So whatever bundle that's in, I am buying that bundle. Absolutely no question, I need the robot dog in my life. And then lastly, the information that you really, really want, that's the release date. October 22nd, 2021. Or you get it a week earlier on the 15th if you've got early access to the game, and that depends on which version of the game you end up buying. Pre-ordering does get you early access to the open beta, but because it says early access, I'm assuming everyone will get a chance to play the open beta, which is good because then you can download it, you can play it for a bit, see if you like it, and you can make your decision from there. Your next stop for Battlefield Info is EA Play Live on July 22nd, and that's where we're going to learn more about Dice LA's game mode, which is a love letter to the franchise. Again, absolutely no idea what that could be, but it sounds really interesting, so I'm looking forward to that. And that is everything for Battlefield 2042. Really, really excited. Great to see a modern, near-future Battlefield game on the cards again, and that reveal trailer was just absolutely incredible. But I hope this video has helped you the last 17 minutes or so get you all the information you could possibly need right now for Battlefield 2042. If you enjoyed the video, drop it a like, let me know down in the comments. That would be awesome. But thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one.